All right, so this is part two of the need for psychological science. So, okay, so we understand we need to have scientific the method we have to do with critical thinking. So how do I go about being scientific? All right, um, you need to be systematic. But in order to guide you, you'll need a scientific attitude. So let's talk about the three parts of the scientific attitude. The first part is curiosity. What does curiosity mean? All right. In order to be a great psychologist, you always have to ask new questions. Okay. New questions. Um, so for instance, um, the behavior I'm noticing in that guy, is it common in all people? Is it more common to people that are under stress? Is it common for males? Is it common for um, whatever the ethnic background of the guy is? Um, is it more common in, um, you know, Marylanders, Montgomery Countyers? Is it more common um, with uh, people who have bachelor's degrees, master's degrees? Or is it more common in... Um, what social economic status do you see? I have asked all of these questions and that's because I'm curious about it. All right. So yes, curiosity killed the cat. All right. So it kind of goes with, um, our hypothesis. So curiosity, if not guided by caution can lead to the death of felines and possibly humans. Hmm. My hypothesis. So your curiosity, yes. Um, curiosity can kill the cat, ha ha ha, but it has to be also guided. So now we have the other two parts of, um, our scientific attitude. All right. So part two is skepticism. All right. So when we are not accepting a, f a fact as true without challenging it, when we see facts and we are going to attempt to disprove them. That is skepticism. Okay. All right. So skepticism generates questions, of course. So we have curiosity. We have skepticism. They always generate questions. Um, is there an, another explanation for the behavior I'm seeing? Is there a problem about how I'm measuring um, an attitude or how I set up my experiment? Do I need to change my theory to fit the evidence? Okay, so the amazing Rinaldi was an, an amazing um, example of, of a skeptic. He did not just accept evidence. Um, he actually tried to think about um, how can I really test people to see what the Aurora or. Yeah, I don't know how to say that word. Um, auroras are around people. Okay. So the last part of the scientific attitude is humility. Okay. Humility refers to seeking the truth rather than just trying to be right. So you have to accept um, situations where you're just downright wrong. Okay. All right. So Albert Einstein has a great um, quote. No amount of experimentation can ever prove me right, but a single experiment can prove me wrong. Okay, so you have to, um, for humility, as a scientist, as a psychologist, you have to seek the truth rather than just trying to be right. David Myers, the gentleman who wrote our textbook, says, What matters is not my opinion or yours, but the true truth nature revealed in response to our questioning. All right, so you have the three. Um, parts of our scientific attitude. So now, critical thinking. Its goal is to get to the truth, even if it means putting aside our own ideas, our own um, intuition, okay? So our parts. You got to look for, so how do we do this? We got to look for hidden assumptions. I decide if you agree with it. Got to look for hidden biases, politics, values, or personal connections. All right, so how do we get down to the truth? All right, we got to put aside our own assumptions and our own bias. Look at the evidence. 
We got to see if there was a flaw and how the information was collected. Did we collect it, you know, inappropriately? And last, are there other explanations for the facts or the results? So we have to look at these. Okay. So that is the second part of the need for psychological science.